Good day. My topic is all about leadership styles. According to Van Wart, Montgomery and Liz, Lisa, administrative leadership is the process of providing the results required by authorized processes in an efficient, effective, and legal or ethical manner. So kasi lahat tayo dito, we are aspiring, kaya nga nag-impay tayo to be in an administrative position or to become a leader in our organization. Now, gaano ka importante yung leadership ng isang leader no, sa isang organization. According to the study cited by BAS 2008, surveys of job satisfaction from the 1920s illustrated the importance of leadership. They uniformly reported that employees' favorable attitude toward their supervisor contributed to the employee satisfaction. In turn, employees' favorable attitude Um, towards their supervisors were usually found to be related to their productivity. So, kumbaga, kung okay yung samahan ng supervisor at saka ng employee, kung okay yung pagtingin ng employee sa leadership ng supervisor, it will cause no, productivity sa organization. Napapaayos yung trabaho, nagiging pulido, success yung nangyayari. According to Katzel, 1987, cited by Bas, Supervisors increasing the morale of employees improve the employee's job performance. So, increasing the morale po of employees, ito po yung support, um, guiding, and of course, no, um, of course, helping the employees. So, it will still, no, improve employee's job performance. So, ganun po ka-importante yung leadership styles talaga natin, especially in our organizations na kung saan tayo. Let's move on to our first leadership style. The first one is coaching leadership style. A coaching leader is someone who can quickly recognize their team members' strength, weaknesses, and motivations to help each individual improve. Now, this type of leader can often assess team members in setting smart goals and then provides regular feedback with challenging projects to promote growth. Their skill in setting clear expectation and creating a positive, motivating environment. Now, you may be a coaching leader if You are supportive, offer guidance instead of giving commands, value learnings as way as gr of growing, ask guided questions, and balance relaying knowledge and helping others find it themselves or are self-aware. Now let's talk about the benefit of this style. Coaching leadership is positive in nature and it promotes the development of new skills, rethinking, empowerment, revisits companies' objectives, and posters a confident family culture. Leaders who coach are often seen as valuable mentors. But still, no challenges dito, while this type of style has many advantages, it can be more time-consuming, nakakapagod, nor kumbaga matagal, as it requires one-on-one -on -one time with employees which can be difficult to obtain in a deadline-driven environment. Okay, so time-consuming po. Now, let's move on to visionary leadership style. Visionary leaders have a powerful ability to drive progress and usher in periods of change by inspiring employees and earning trust of new ideas. Now, a visionary leader is also able to establish a strong organizational band. They strive to foster confidence among direct reports and colleagues alike. According to Mans and Sims, 1993, proposed four types of leaders. One of that is visionary leaders as they communicate their vision, emphasize their values, and exhorts or encourages, inspires, and persuades followers. Now, you may be a visionary leader if you are persistent and bold, strategic, risk-taking, inspirational, optimistic, innovative, and of course, magnetic. Ang benefits po nitong style na to is visionary leadership can help companies grow, unite teams, and overall company and improve outdated technologies or practices. Kasi nga, may vision siya lagi. But the challenges of visionary leaders may miss important details or other opportunities because they are so focused on the bigger pictures all the time. They may also sacrifice the resolution of present-day issues because they are more future-oriented, which could leave their team feeling unheard. The third one is the servant's leadership style. Now, servant leaders live by a people's first mindset and believe that when team members feel personally and professionally fulfilled, they're more effective and more likely to regularly 
produce a great work because of their emphasis on employee satisfaction and collaboration. Now, they tend to achieve higher levels of respect. Now, you may be a servant leader if you first motivate your team, have excellent communication skills, personally care about your team, encourage collaboration and engagement, and of course, commit to growing your team professionally. The benefit of being a servant leader have the capacity to boost employees' loyalty and productivity, improve employees' development and decision-making, cultivate trust, and create future leaders. While the challenges is servant leaders can become burned out. Nakakapagod po kasi yung ganon. As they often put the needs of their team above their own, they may have a hard time being authoritative when they need to be. Let's move on to the fourth one, autocratic leadership style. It is also called authoritarian style of leadership. Now, this type of leader is someone who is focused primarily on the results and efficiency. Result lang lagi. They often make decisions alone or with a small trusted group and expect employees to do exactly what they've asked. Now, it can be helpful to think of this type of leaders as military commanders. According to Har, um, Har Evi 1992, as cited by Bas 2008, authoritative leaders say this way, we will act according to the laws and rules. So, para po talagang military, no? So, now, you will be an autocratic leader if you have self-confidence, are self-motivated, communicate clearly and consistently, follow rules, are dependable, value highly in structured environments, and believe in supervised works environment. Now, ang benefit po dito is that autocratic leaders can promote productivity through delegation, provide clear and direct communication, reduce employee stress by making decisions quickly on their own. But the challenges is that autocratic leaders are often prone to high levels of stress because they feel responsible of everything. No feeling nila sa kanila lahat. No kaya nila lahat. Since they lack of flexibility and often do not want to hear others' ideas. These leaders are often resented by the team. Kaya nga palaging may kaaway po tong leader na to. Okay, so the fifth one is the license fair or hands off leadership style. Now, license fair is not that negative style. It's the opposite of the autocratic leadership type. Focusing mostly on delegating many tasks, dinidelegate niya lagi yung mga tasks sa mga members and providing little to no supervision. Because of license fair leader does not spend their time intensely managing employees, they often have more time to dedicate other to other projects. So, iba-iba na lang yung pinapakialaman. Now, you may be a license fair leader if you are effectively delegate, believe in freedom of choice, of course, provide sufficient resources and tools, will take control if needed lang, offer constructive criticism, foster leadership qualities in your team, and promote an autonomous work environment. The benefit of this leadership style is that it encourages accountability, creativity, and relaxed environment which often leads to higher employee retention rates. The challenges naman dito is that leadership style does not work well for new employees as they need guidance and hands-on support in the beginning. Now, this method can also lead to a lack of structure, leadership confusion, and of course, an employee is not feeling properly supported. Kasi nga, parang napapabayaan tayo ni sir ha. Ganun yung naiisip ng mga employee. But yung intention talaga dyan ng leader na mag-learn yung mga employee. The sixth one is the democrat democratic or participative leadership style. Uh, it is also called participative style. It's a combination of autocratic and license fair type of leaders. A democratic leader is someone who asks for input and considers feedback from team. Team ha, yung word dyan before making a decision. Because team members feel their voice is heard and contribution matter. A democratic leadership style is often credited with fostering high levels of employee engagement and workplace satisfaction. Now, you may be a democratic, democratic or participative leader if you value group discussion, provide all information to the team when making decisions, promote a work environment where everyone shares their ideas. You are rational, flexible, and are good at medi mediation. The benefit of this leadership style is employee can feel empowered, valued, and unified. It has the power to boost retention and morale. It also requires less managerial oversight as employees are typically part of the decision-making process and know what they need to do. While the challenges of this kind of leadership is that this leadership style 
has the potential to be inefficient and costly as it takes a long time to organize big group discussions, obtain ideas and feedback, discuss possible outcomes, and communicate decisions. It also can add social pressure to members of the team who don't like sharing ideas. Yun yun ang yayari. Kasi nga, kumukuha ka lagi ng suggestion, paano yung iba hindi gustong um, mag-share? No? Na-awkward sila. Ganon. We move on to our seventh one, the face setter leadership style. Now, the face setter style is one of the most effective for achieving fast results. Face setting leaders are primarily focused on performance, often set high standard, nagsiset talaga sila ng standard, and hold their team members accountable for achieving their goals. Now, you may be a face setter leader if you set a high bar. Okay, you focus on goals are slow to praise, will jump into hit goals if needed, and are highly competent or value performance over soft skills. Now, the benefit of this kind of leadership is that it pushes employees to hit goals and accomplish business objective. It promotes high energy and dynamic work environment. But the challenges of this can also lead to stress out employees as they're always pushing toward or the deadline. Napi pressure. The past pace Work environment can also create miscommunications or lack of clear instructions. Yun yun ang yari. Transformational leadership style is similar to the coach style. Is that it focuses on the clear communication, goal setting, and employee motivation. But however, instead of placing the majority of the energy into each employee's individual goals, the transformational leader is driven by a commitment to organizational objectives. Sabi nga ni Pierre Sims. And others, as cited by Bas, they found for model of leadership is another dito yung transformation leadership. It's more on stimulation, inspiration, vision, idealism, and challenges the status quo. Now you may be a transformational leader leader if you have mutual respect with your team, provide encouragement, inspires others to achieve their goals, think of the big picture, place value in intellectually challenge your team are creative, have a good understanding of organizational needs. Now, ang benefit naman dito is that transformational leadership values personal connections with their teams which can boost company's moral and retention. It also values the ethics of the company and team instead of being entirely goal-oriented. Ang challenge naman dito is that since transformational leaders look at individuals, it can cause team or company wins to go unnoticed. These leaders can also overlook for details. We move on to our ninth, the transactional leadership style, is someone who is laser focused on performance similar to face eater. Under this leadership style, the manager establishes predetermined incentive, usually in form of monetary reward for success and disciplinary action for failure. Unlike the face eater leadership style, true transactional leaders are also focused on mentorship, instruction, and training to achieve goals and enjoy the rewards. According to Piers, as quoted by Bas, transactional leadership is more on contingent material reward, contingent personal reward. Now, you may be a transactional leader if you value corporate structure, micromanage, don't question authority, are practical and pragmatic, valuable, hitting, and are reactionary. The benefit of this leadership style is that it facilitates the achievement of goals to short terms and clearly defined structure. While the challenge is that being overly focused on short-term goals and not having long-term goals can cause a company to struggle with adversity. Now, this type stifles creativity and unmotivating to employees who are not incentivized by monetary reward. Kasi focus lang kasi siya sa transaction or sa reward. The last part is the bureaucratic leadership style are similar to autocratic leaders in that they expect their team members to follow the rules and procedures precisely as written. According to Nachman, as cited by Bas, empirical established patterns of strategic leadership behavior, bureaucratic strategy is based on rules and the way the bureaucracy interprets rules, policies, and procedures. Now, you may be a bureaucratic leader if you are detail-oriented and task-focused, value rules and structure, have a great work ethic, are strong-willed, have a commitment to your organization, and are self-disciplined. The benefit dito is that bureaucratic leadership can be efficient in organizations that need to follow strict rules and regulation. 
Each person in the team company has clearly defined role which leads to efficiency. These leaders separate work from relation relationship to avoid clouding the team. So, it's not more on relationship orientation. Challenges naman dito is that this style does not promote creativity which can feel restricting to some employees. This leadership style is also slow to change and does not thrive in an environment that needs to be dynamic. Nang magpapatanong ka, kasi disclaimer lang ha, sa dami-dami ng mga styles na yon, there's no perfect style talaga. No? There are times na um, luwag-luwagan mo na yung belt mo pag okay naman yung performance ng mga employees mo pero pag stubborn na talaga you still have to be in authority no? so leaders talaga don't really choose one style lang no? um, they vary no? um, iba-iba din sila ng mga style depends on the situation but still no? how do we evaluate if a leadership style is effective ineffective or ethical or unethical or how do we assess if a leadership style is bad or good Napapatanong ba tayo dyan? Okay, so according to Killerman Barbara in his book, Bad Leadership, bad leadership falls into two categories. Bad as an effective and bad as an ethical. This distinction is not a theoretical construct, rather it is based on empirical evidence. So what constitutes an effective leadership? An effective leadership fails, fails to produce the desired change. No, kung walang nangyayari, walang change, an effective ka. For reasons that include missing traits, weak skills, strategies, bad conceived, and tactics badly employed, and effective leadership falls short of its intention, according to Killerman in his book, Bad Leadership. Ano naman yung metric of being an ethical leadership? An ethical leadership fails to distinguish between right and wrong because common codes of decency and good conduct are in some way violated and the leadership process is defiled. So, yan yung po nangyari. And we must be familiar to this kasi nga, there Okay, palapit na yung election, we must really choose talaga on our leaders. Are they effective or are they ethical? Okay, so ito po yung um, sabi ni Barbara Killerman no? um, of good and bad leadership. How can we, paano natin sila mag-base? Now, if a leader is ineffective and unethical, he had bad intention and there's no change or accomplishment. If a leader is ineffective but ethical, he has or she has good intention but there's no change to be accomplished. No? If a leader is effective yet unethical, of course, he or she has bad intention. The leader has, has still accomplishment. Now, if you're an effective or unethical leader, you have good intention and you can change. There is an accomplishment as according to this figure by Killerman. Isa pa dito, no? Um relation-oriented and task-oriented leaders, Blake and Monton, as cited by Bus, studied the dimensions from 1 or to 9 of tasks and relation-oriented leadership by using a grid. Five styles could be generated from the dimension and, of course, read then advance this popular taxonomy of management in relation to eight types of which is consequence of being low or high. In Blake and Monton, as, um, as cited by Bus, there is two dimension of relationship and task orientation and a third dimension effectiveness managers are characterized as various combination of this three dimensional typology as according to Monton as shown in the table here as cited by Bas so titignan natin so ito na po yung managers type by leadership style if you are a deserter leader um, related dito yung license pair or hands on leadership you are or a leader has um, low relationship orientation low task orientation and so matotal no um low yung effectiveness if an autocratic um, type this autocratic type is low on relationship orientation and high in task orientation more on task but still low yung effectiveness missionary type high yung relationship orientation um low yung task orientation low pa rin yung effectiveness compromiser type high yung relationship orientation and high yung task orientation low pa rin yung effectiveness in leadership bureaucratic, lo, low yung um, relationship orientation low din yung task orientation but still effective naman yung leadership benevolent autocratic leadership style is low on um, relationship and low din yung a uh, high rather yung task orientation, effective naman and so on as developer and executive um, high yung effectiveness 
nila as according to as quote as cited by bus and the bus handbook of leadership okay so now mapapatanong ka naman okay i heard a lot of this okay narinig na namin to now how to choose your own and develop your leadership, leadership style now as someone is interested sa mga topic na to sa mga approach na to it can be helpful to choose leadership style talaga that feels na feel mo na authentic ka dyan. some question you may ask when trying to determine which style is right for you included so tanungin mo yung sarili mo dito now what do I value more goals or relationship are you task oriented or relationship oriented tanungin mo yung sarili mo the second question is that do I believe in structure or the freedom of choice no, ganun yung mga leaders eh the third one I, am, I, am I more democratic or autocratic the third one is would I rather make decisions on my own or collectively would I rather work on my own or um, magtulungan tayo fourth is do I focus on short or long term long term goals fifth is does motivation come from empowerment or direction does it come from guidance or just commands commanding someone the sixth one is what does a healthy team dynamic look like ask yourself I will, will be graduating sooner in masteral you will become a leader administratively and there are just few examples of questions to ask yourself while reading through leadership style to help you decide which styles you relate most with now to develop your leadership style now consider these strategies first one is have an experimentation try out various approaches in different circumstances and pay attention to the outcome and be flexible changing your own approach okay experiment no test yourself the second strategy is that seek a mentor magpatulong ka speaking with a leader with more experience than yourself can offer great insight can offer great insight into how they develop their style and what work for them the third one is ask for feedback no magpatulong ka sa iba magtanong ka although sometimes it's hard to hear constructive feedback kasi sometimes um, sometimes naririnig natin negative but it helps you grow in a successful being a successful leader seek feedback from individuals you trust and will give you an honest answer no truth hurts but it will set you free i believe that now be authentic the last part no if you are trying to be perfect a leadership style that is in opposition opposition to your personality or morals it will come across as inauthentic so magpakatotoo ka lang no try to choose leadership style that is in alignment with your strength and work to improve it okay so mag-iwan po tayo ng kasabihan po sabi ng isang leadership author walang iba John B. Maxwell leadership is not about titles position or even flow chart or organizational chart pa yan it's about one's life influencing another okay po so it's not talaga um, nasa sayo yung pagiging leader mo no, may title ka man or wala you are a leader hindi lang po to more an administrative process no? you are a leader in your organization in your family and of course in yourself okay so here's the references of my topic and yun lang po and maraming salamat sa pakikinig no? leader ka na okay <music>